How's it going? Good. Kind of scary. Yeah. reason we're up here. On January 21st, we went to scout out a location for a photo shoot. We decided to check out Cyprus on probably one of the stormiest days out there. We'll see if I make it to the top or if there's a top. I got hit in the head with a nice chunk and it wasn't fun. This kind of area is just, it's too dangerous to go into. There's too much snow. I feel like we're all gonna fall through and die, so. We were planning on doing a somewhat Red Riding Hood inspired shoot, so we needed a place with snow and trees. Checking one last place. Don't the mic. Got that mic Don't on. The mic. What did we find? The soap. <laughs> Looks like we found our spot. Going to the mountain! Not you though. We scouted Cyprus in the middle of January and we're supposed to do the shoot the following week. But with the crazy weather, it was postponed until today. Alright, so you join us on the morning of March 19th. It's a good three months after we filmed that last segment where we're checking out the location. We finally got everything good to go. We've got the model, we've got the dress, we've got all the gear behind me here, ready to go. We're super stoked, we're going up to Cyprus around four o'clock today. We're gonna shoot uh, kind of later into dusk, maybe a little bit of sunset. We're crossing our fingers, there's still snow up there. Picking up Gersamar and then head to Mia's to get her makeup done and then we're off to Cyprus. Ooh. Should be fun. Hopefully we don't freeze our butts off. Woo woo, we're here. Gersamar and I actually went to the same high school and she recently got into the modeling industry. The difficulties of finding wardrobe finally paid off. I love the dress and I want to keep it forever. But it'll fund our next shoot. Got our gorgeous model all ready to go in the back. Bye. completely froze our butts off, but worth it. <clears throat> okay, we are back home again, right after our Cypress shoot, and things went pretty well, I hope. Uh, a little bit of trouble this time, wasn't quite as perfect as maybe Highcroft was, um, even though that wasn't perfect, but... <laughs> Uh, yep, yeah, things went pretty well, but it was a struggle 
and yeah, we'll get into some things later. So we definitely found um, what we thought was the perfect spot. Uh, it was covered in trees, it was a nice path, it was really close to the parking lot so that, you know, the model and the dress didn't have to walk too far. We thought it was great, we thought we could get the model kind of out, off path, between some trees, um, to some fresh snow, um, yeah, things like that so they would look really nice, but uh, as we found out later, it just really wasn't the case. Alright, so we found a day, uh, we get over to the makeup artist place and we started doing makeup, started you know, talking, talking about the shoot, getting everything prepped, and she had hair like down to her elbows or more. <laughs> yeah, very, know. very she long hair. She had just the longest hair I think I've ever seen. <laughs> she came with it curled too, mostly curled, but... Yeah. We ended up having to do her makeup there, which took a really long time, and then as well as getting her hair done, we had to curl it again just because it's so heavy, it yeah. fell down. So that took a lot of time, so we ended up heading to the mountain about an hour later about than hour later. Yeah. we hoped for, so it was a little bit delayed. Yeah, and we were thinking, you know, an hour later, we kind of wanted um, a lower light scenario for our shoot, so we thought, you know, it's fine. We kind of waited, wanted to wait till nighttime anyway. But yeah, as it happens, that was not so great. <laughs> it got too cold and too dark too fast. Yes. Yeah. Alright, so we finally drive up there. Uh, we get parked. I pull out the drone, start doing some drone shots. Lex is unpacking all the gear from the car. And this was a shoot that made me think, you know what, maybe for these kind of snow things, we should go a little bit more... Um, light basic. on the yeah, gear? Yeah, a little bit more light on the gear. But it not was, even. It was so crazy. Just, you know, just hauling all that gear and then as soon as we get into the forest, it's just snow everywhere. So like, where do you put gear down? How do you change lenses? How do you, you know, rest yeah. our stabilizers? How do you even balance our stabilizers? Because there's no flat yeah. ground, like... I had to balance yours and it was all off. I almost yeah. broke your camera, which was <laughs> a mess. Yeah, that was a little, that was a little crazy, but um, yeah, it's just, it's kind of crazy when you go out to a snow location you just don't really realize how many challenges there is going to be you know? we were also on a trail so there are people walking back and forth getting yeah. in our way and yeah, we were getting our, in their way yeah of course our gear is kind of all over the trail so getting in there way quite a bit yeah we were sinking everywhere there's like feet holes everywhere <laughs> yeah. footholds holes yeah holes. <laughs> uh, yeah i think i sunk down to my waist like a couple times. I Good think. thing I was wearing uh, waterproof hiking boots. You're just in like sneakers. Yeah, I was in my sneakers. Big mistake. So the next problem with kind of being stuck on that one path was it really limited how much we could move to get different kinds of shots. It really, I had to kind of fake that that path became different spots. She so, was always in the same spot. And she had to be in the much. same spot, kind of walking forward and backwards. And I had to move my camera way out, you know, behind trees and um, you know, basically waist deep in snow yeah. to get those different angles so that I could make it look like she's traversing, you know, a longer path. So it wasn't just her walking back and forth in the same area. And yeah, there's just a lot of struggles and a lot of things we had to improvise on the day of because of the fact that we're in this location. and. I think for next time we should probably just <laughs> come up with a better location. I mean, it was a great location in terms of parking and ease of access, but maybe we should have waited till the snow was melted a little bit more or just found a location that wasn't so high up in the mountains that had snow, maybe did early in the year, just something. And again, with the cold, uh, frozen fingers, you know, everyone's feet Toes. were hurting. <laughs> it was just, everyone wanted to get out of there. And at a shoot, they just really drags on everything like everyone's spirits were kind of low yeah. I would no one say was super super happy I mean people were trying to keep their spirits up but I, I, I was really trying I felt like for us it was easier because we're moving this is like our shoot but everyone else was kind of standing around not knowing what to do so they were very cold tired and wanted to get out of there yeah but we were kind of like always moving and going so it was a little bit easier yeah it was a little bit easier on us yeah it was but um, yeah, me being just, you know, kind of consumed with the shoot, um, having to improvise so much on the day of, I was kind of panicking quite a bit. So, you know, when you're panicking and you're trying as hard as you can and then you see other people kind of just wanting to leave, it's a little bit stressful, it's a little bit hard on you. But um, yeah, I was just, I was just 
you know, grateful that everyone is there to help. And yeah. Um, yeah. Luckily, we had Mia's son came and he helped hold lights and yeah. he took some BTS for us, which helped a yeah, lot. Yeah, was holding a camera the whole day and that actually helped a lot. Yeah. yeah. Just having someone there to kind of man the camera, move around. Yeah, especially if I can't be there for that yeah. shot or if I want to be in the shot. Yeah, <laughs> no, or just like for him to flip around just to you know catch his mom doing something. Yeah. Silly. Like it really really helps. So maybe something to think about in the future, but. Mm -hmm. So after we finished filming most of the video stuff, or all of the video stuff, at least what I thought I needed, um, we, well, Christopher went back to change, uh, change hair. Change hair and warm up like because she yeah. was frozen. Yeah, so we gave her a break so she would warm up. And I had the task of really just figuring out what the heck to do. Because all my ideas, all my visions of, you know, what the shoot was going to be for the photo portion, just wasn't going to pan out in this location. So... Yeah, I really had to scramble, figure out where I needed to be so that her being on the path was going to look nice in the photo. And what we kind of came up with, we had these candles because um, she had this nice lantern that she was holding. So we bought these candles at a dollar store, um, lit a couple of them and kind of placed them around in a semicircle. They kept going out. Yeah. It took so long to light yeah, they kept the candles. Going out. Yeah. <laughs> That was, uh, that was annoying. Yeah. <laughs> Dollar store. Yeah. Um, so we did, you know, finally get those set up. We got her in the middle. Um, we did that shot. That was totally improvised. I did not think that we were going to do that until we kind of did it. And even now that we did it, I just know there's going to be so much post-production work to make it work. When we were doing it, it looked very cultish. We just had <laughs> yeah. candles in this circle and... I don't yeah, know what we're doing. <laughs> but I think in the end it'll it'll look pretty and cool. It was like pitch black out too by that yeah, time. Yeah, it was very dark at that time, so limited visibility. Um, we're kind of tripping all over so ourselves. Luckily we have quite a bit of LEDs set up around the area, but I'm so happy I wore hiking boots because I was like climbing up there trying to help yeah. her get up there yeah. and then even just like lighting and stuff, so that helped a lot just because it's really dangerous. It is dangerous, could, yeah. Could have fallen or anything, not even just being cold, but having that grip was really, really good. Yeah, basically where the area where we were, um, there's about, say about like three feet of snow and right under there, you don't know if it's going to be a tree well, you don't know if it's going to be, you know, a stream or something, so... When you fall through, it's a little bit, it, okay, it's very sketchy, <laughs> so once you get off path, it's a little bit crazy and, you know, it really just is worth taking that extra step to be safe. Yeah, just well, even, like, like you were probably being really dangerous. You were running all over, but you didn't want Gersmar in in the snow, in the yeah. sinking snow, so he did that, but then he was running with his, like, gear and everything, so I got nervous yeah, for you. that's true, yeah. And I think you were just kind of, you are all frazzled and stuff, but you are a yeah. little, little sketchy. Basically what it comes down to is we're out there, we've invested the time, we've invested the money, um, we have the makeup artist there, we have the model there. There is no way I'm going to let this yeah. shoot fall through. So I'm kind of willing to, you know, risk my gear a little bit. Mm, yeah, yeah. So I was that more the scared shoot about can... you. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. Not the... I don't care if the no, I do care about the, <laughs> gear, about the gear, but like, <laughs> when you're slipping and falling, I'm like, ah, yeah. careful. Well, yeah, anyway, I'm, I'm willing to risk <laughs> my gear and a little bit of my health. Not my overall health, but I'm willing to incur some bruises, you know, okay, just okay. to get the shoot Don't done. want me to roll down the mountain. <laughs> um, yeah, just because we've invested so much and it's really, really important to us. Yes. Yeah, I could feel that we weren't really getting what we wanted exactly, yeah. so it was kind of like we really have to push for something now. Yeah. It was a lot of improvisation, so it didn't really go according to plan, but I think we did end up with some really cool stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I have some ideas for you know how to kind of use the post-production to make it look really awesome yeah. <laughs> in the end. So we'll come up with some good stuff, but yeah, we'll see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So one of the larger struggles that we had at this shoot was actually, you know, delegating tasks to each member so that they could help out and kind of, you know, finish off the shoot. It would be easier if, you know, I could tell Lex to go grab the stabilizer, but then, oh no, I need to change lenses or I just, you know, need I need to, to rebalance the stabilizer or just something that's very techy but needs to be done. And I found it really difficult to actually delegate tasks because, um, 
maybe you or definitely me and our son, like they don't really know my gear that well and know all the technicalities and things that need to be done. So I found myself just kind of handling everything by myself, but that meant that you know, the three of you were kind standing of standing around. around. Yeah, I, I felt that. Yeah, and I, w I was really glad that you guys had cameras on you. We were taking BTS footage. Um, I had a little sneak peek at the film that Lex is putting together, and it looks awesome. There's lots of BTS footage there. But, yeah, I think in the future, just kind of knowing how to delegate a little bit more might be really nice. Or I guess just in the future, everyone will be a little bit more used to working together, and then everyone will know the gear a little bit better, and then everyone yeah. can kind of help That's something that... I need to learn. Like, I really don't know any of his gear. I'm just learning on these shoots. It's not like we've gone through everything and he's showing me what things are. I don't how memorize can you, it. How yeah. can you go through it, right? Like, I feel like is... I should, but oh, do I? Oh, no. I don't have time for that. <laughs> so there's one instance where I was stuck, you know, out behind some trees, just kind of waist deep in some snow. I was not moving anywhere. And I had to guide Lex through going through my bag. <laughs> and I think you're setting up a light one, yeah one of the flashes or one of the lights or something and i had to kind of guide her like exactly where it was i don't which bag to open i didn't know what it was how to <laughs> set it up and then but it worked yeah it, i don't know what worked. your equipment so is fine. but I, I got it yeah so it is it's it is something that comes with time um definitely when i was working in the wedding industry as well it's just something that comes with time so a little bit difficult for now um should get better later and the other struggle was our limited portfolio from the shoot. So with Highcroft, um, I think we ended up having about 25 portfolio pieces. So 25 distinct shots that we're really happy with that I took the time to Photoshop up really nice to look the best they can. This one, I'm thinking maybe eight or so. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's just not that many portfolio pieces. Mm -hmm. But the good news is, is the location is pretty spectacular just having that like baby's crying all right back to it <laughs> got her to bed yeah so yeah with just limited portfolio uh, we don't have that many pieces but the location is amazing um, we really have you know this nice dark blue forest with a flash on the subject to kind of pop her out of there we think the images really do have a different, like, like, really different vibe to the other ones at Highcroft. Sure. <laughs> and I think that, you know, just the nature of them, people kind of expect, like, yeah, you're not going to get as many images, but mm -hmm. the fact that they're in that location makes them pretty spectacular. So that's pretty cool. Way more unique. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's about it. Um, that kind of wraps up our first impressions from the shoot and how we felt after shooting it. Now we get to do all that post-production, make those beautiful v videos and photos, and We'll yeah. see what comes of it. See what comes out. <laughs> all right, what's up guys? So we are finally done editing all the photos. We actually turned out to have around 10, yeah, 10 portfolio pieces from the shoot. Can't wait to talk about them. The shoot actually turned out pretty awesome. Um, definitely wasn't what I thought I was going to get heading into it, but uh, you know, it's completely different from the first shoot. Um, it's different from the third shoot, which we've already done, but don't worry about that. And uh, yeah, just really excited about it. Can't wait to share them with you. So let's head into Lightroom now. So once again, going through some of that BTS, as I mentioned before, trying to capture some of those detail shots, just to uh, round out the story a little bit. Um, so we got some makeup being done, then just a couple photos on the shoot day, just to, just to have some stuff, you know. Uh, nothing too special, but, you know, it's nice for everyone involved. Alright, so, by the time we were done the video, as we mentioned before, we really had just about no light left, um, it was very dark. Definitely need to use flash, which really meant that um, the flash light was gonna spill all over the place. Now thankfully, um, I got pretty good in Photoshop <laughs> and I was able to take care of most of that, but um, it really was quite a, strong, quite a challenge. So I'm just gonna go through, just gonna show you the raws real quick. So. 
this is basically what I was working for, working with in the raw. So I knew, I think I took one clean plate without the flash, but it didn't really, um, it wasn't in the exact same position as this was, but the clean plate was enough that I could kind of darken up that tree so I didn't have to do it uh, just with the clone stamp tool or something like that. Um, so I was able to darken out that tree, the ground, um, just using curve adjustments and things like that to darken it out. Um, spot removal was huge. I don't, I don't know if you can tell on the YouTube video, but so much spot removal was done on this. It's pretty crazy. Um, but yeah, this is the final image. So really just lighting up that red dress, lighting up that model in this nice dark blue environment. Um, kind of what we were going for heading in there and I think with the color tone and everything it really really works um, in terms of posing so we're having the model so again what we were talking about before um, the model had to basically stay on this one strip of path that was compact enough to hold her weight um, I however had to go way off up into the hills, up to the snow banks and things like that just to get these different angles right because we wanted that kind of model in between the trees showing off the forest and all the rest of it so I had to move out that way but um, yeah in terms of posing so I was kind of going for that you know uh, model this beautiful girl walking through the trees holding the lantern in this nice red dress and just kind of doing lots of poses like that. Uh, here we have the second one, so slightly different pose, turning to the side, um, but quite similar in terms of shot overall. And here's one we had her walking, so a little bit tighter for this one. Walking kind of towards the flash, so again taking care of that spill so that it's not uh, distracting towards the image. And here we have another one, so this one um, we actually need to set up the lock, uh, set up the softbox on a light stand, and I actually got Lex to throw the dress. Unfortunately, the dress or the extension piece that we were using um, is made of like this really stretchy material. So when Lex would throw it, it would kind of like stretch out and spring back, and it wouldn't have this nice flowy texture to it. So what you're seeing here is kind of an extensive use of Photoshop. Once again, uh, just to get that nice shape. Um, just really extend that dress and make it look a little bit more grand, a little bit more um, special, I guess. Um, in terms of lighting, as you can see here, I'm using that softbox again real close to her to get that nice effect. Um, I really didn't want that light to spill all over the surrounding trees, so keeping it close and then cloning it out is a good way to keep that light up, at least somewhat contained. Um, and then you have the clean plate to clean up the snow and things like that. Um, and as we're talking about cleaning up the snow, so once again, all these little pieces of branches, um, sorry, just loading up here. Come on, come on, come on, there we go. So all this, all these branches, all these pieces of dirt, all these pieces of leaves and everything, it was really windy there, so it was really knocking down a lot of snow. I mean, sorry, a lot of leaves onto the snow. Uh, but all this crap, all that dirt had to go, and now we have the final image. So, um, definitely not perfect, but good enough. Uh, cleaned it up, I think, well enough. <laughs> it's not too noticeable. But yeah, that was a lot of work. Alright, so once I got the kind of wider shots done, um, we kind of moved on to some mids and some portraits. Uh, so here we have using that piece of extension fabric to just kind of swoop towards the camera a little bit. Uh, nothing too too special about this shot, just kind of getting a, a nice full body for her. Um, here's just a subtle variation of the angle, again using the, the fabric in the same way. Uh, here we have a bit of a close-up, so a nice tighter portrait using that lantern as foreground. Um, just kind of showing off the makeup a little bit more, a little bit more of the hair. Alright, so this is not the final shot, this is the raw, um, so, but this is what we were talking about in the previous section. So we had set up these candles around and I kind of thought in my head, I'm like, well, they could either 
be little point lights on the ground. They could be made bigger to make like more of an effect, uh, more of like a candle lit effect. Um, but it really did kind of look culty and it wasn't really what we were going for. So they had to go, they had to go. Um, so I would say 30 to 40% of the entire edit was just spent on the snow, getting the snow uh, to look uh, good basically and not a complete mess. Um, of course the remaining 60% getting the color tone right, getting her skin looking good, uh, the dress looking good and all the rest of it. Um, but yeah, at this point um, the light had really fallen to complete blackness. Uh, she had a hair change so it went from like long and down to this nice braid, this nice uh, I guess French braid, I'm not really sure, but uh, coming down to, towards your back. And to light this and to balance with the um, color temperature of the candles, we actually used tiny um, Aperture M9s, these little LED panels that they have gels that go in the front of it and to make it more of a tungsten temperature. Um, so yeah, basically I had Lex and Mia's son. Um, they actually went on either side. So they went up the snowbank and then went on either side of her and then lit her from either direction. And the reason I did that was just so that we didn't have too many shadows. Um, I wanted some of the shadows, but I also kind of wanted to look like it was lit by the candles. So um, having it a uh, two-point lighting kind of kind of works. It kind of makes sense. But yeah, finished product looks quite nice. She pops off the background nicely, and I think the colors really really work on this one. All right, so next one, um, same hair. I'm doing again some more close-ups, some portraits. Um, really paying attention to showing off the hair. Um, you spent a lot of time doing it, so I really wanted to show it off. Um, also with the makeup, it's more of a glam kind of makeup style, so showing off those lashes, the, the um, eyeshadow, all her accessories, and of course cleaning up her skin a little bit. And this one, just to close it off, so again, getting portraits at this time is really hard. Everyone was super cold. Everyone wanted to get the heck out of there. Um, I believe this is lit again with one Aperture M9. It could have been two. Um, actually, it looks like two. So I think it was two Aperture M9s again from either side. Um, I think it was a little bit tough trying to get expressions out of her. Um, she did amazing on the shoot and it'd be hard to ask for anything more out of her but she is a little bit newer to the scene she's not really used to coming out with like amazing expressions all the time so especially in this really really cold environment it was a little bit tough to kind of get uh, really amazing expressions out so I ended up getting you know this one as a good one I'm really happy with it really kind of shows her off as uh, really kind of shows her off as a strong independent woman you know we're going for that powerful vibe and I think this one really does a trick all right let's just close this out there so this is the final 10 we got her wide showing her in the forest we got her full bodies we got her close-ups um, we got two different hairstyles in there and yeah some with that extra piece of fabric flying and some without and I think we you know walk away with some really cool images um, most of the time I'm using the Godox 8200 with a softbox um, again using that aperture light dome mini um, but yeah as I was saying for the last couple shots so these three right here um, those were all lit with the aperture alm 9s and while I wouldn't use them most of the time uh, when it came to this shoot and especially nighttime shoots they're pretty awesome they're pretty nice to use they're really small and portable especially when we're standing on snow and slippery surfaces um, the assistants held them no problem and I, I mean results speak for themselves I think they did great so I want to talk about um, Photoshop and kind of different strategies that kind of play into these images um, when you're trying to get the final images for your portfolios. So I know last time I was talking about how Photoshop should be 
just perfecting what is already there. You're not really changing too much. Um, you know, you're just doing subtle little improvements to get the photo to its end goal. But on a shoot like this, I mean, we had so many problems um, to fix, to solve, and just trying to get some images that look amazing. And when you have struggles with, you know, time, lighting, models, um, the location is just like a super big struggle. You kind of have to take a step back from accentuating everything that's amazing about the model and you kind of have to look towards, you know, okay, what do I got? I got this amazing location. Um, I got this amazing dress. You know, even if the model's not giving you the perfect expressions and the perfect, you know, poses and things like that, um, you can kind of look at, you know, what you have and what you can use towards making an amazing image. Um, so basically what I'm trying to say is I was changing a lot more things in Photoshop than I did for the last shoot. And I was just trying to explain kind of my thought process and why I did that and why it's important to kind of keep an open mind about these things. You know, some people might be pretty adverse to cloning out softboxes and people and things like that in photos because it's not real, but you know, I don't let anything stand in my way of getting amazing images and I think that's something that's really important, um, especially when you're just starting out. I mean, you don't get too many chances, there's not too many shoots coming your way and you gotta make the best of everything you can. And last but not least, I was trying out a bit of a different workflow uh, for these images. So because it was so Photoshop intensive, it was hard to get the exact uh, color palette and color style right out of Lightroom. So what I actually did was kind of did a base edit, you know, add some contrast, you know, take the highlights down to things like that inside Lightroom, um, copy it to all its clean plates and things like that, and then take that into Photoshop. <clears throat> And in Photoshop, I was doing a lot more of the color work, um, a lot more of the, you know, tonality, curves adjustments and things like that. And just because Photoshop, you have so much more control, you can add masks, you can, you know, just apply things to very specific areas, something you can't do in Lightroom. So once the image was complete for the most part, I would take it back into Lightroom and then add the last kind of finishing touch and something I've been playing around a lot with lately is these Lutify LUTs. Um, they are mostly for video, but they do have a pack that you can import into Lightroom as a profile. And these profiles are really cool. I mean, you can set them, uh, set the amount of the slider here. Um, yeah, they just, they add a really cool effect. Um, I would say it really gives the images that last like you know, 10% to make them really, really pop off the screen. And yeah, I'm a big fan. So yeah, I was using the Hackmanite LUT on this one, giving a little bit more purple in the shadows. Um, the skin tone's a little bit more of that orange, um, just to, you know, really pop her out of the scene. And then from there, I'm just doing last minute tweaks to highlight shadows, whites, uh, sometimes blacks. Um, sometimes, not in this case, but I'm using some of the HSL panel just to get the you know last minute last minute tweaks and you know little nudges to everything um yeah so a little bit of a different workflow I'm not doing as much color adjustments in lightroom doing more in photoshop and i guess that's why that's so much less uh shots that i'm showing you here so basically all the shots i edited were the portfolio images and there was no like extra uh, variation of opposing and things like that because I couldn't just sync it across all the different photos. So that about does it for this shoot and this behind the scenes video. Um, thank you so much for watching. Uh, we're really happy about what we could walk away with. Um, we think we came out with 10 really solid images. They have a super different vibe and color tone and mood and everything from the last shoot. And we're just really excited about it. So can't wait to talk to you guys about the next shoot. Mm-hmm.